Hey y'all, I'm April. And I'm Caroline. And this is your bloody happy hour. Caroline, are you ready for this? This is your newest guilty pleasure. It's the bloodiest part of your week. Did we say something about it also being happy hour? Showed in. Because we're about to be sipping on some murder. Bloody happy hour. This is a Rogue Media Network podcast. Caroline, you should tell them about the newest thing that Bloody Happy Hour is doing. A Patreon. It's a Patreon. What is that? Um, That means you're basically like a VIP member and there's two different levels that you can, you know, subscribe to and you get you get some perks. You maybe get like merch a little earlier. You get... Or exclusive merch. Exclusive merch. You could get... um. First dibs on signing up for a live show. You get episodes with no commercials. You get our video because our video is no longer available on YouTube. It is only on Patreon. And the most important to me is you get videos of our live shows. So if you are far away and you couldn't make our last live show, it will be on the website. We're going to record this future live show. It's going to be on Patreon, but also bonus episodes each month. You guys tell us all the time you want more episodes. This is a way for you to get more episodes. So you're going to get our basic Tuesday Thursdays that we always put out, right? But if you're on a Patreon, you're VIP, you're going to get more. I can't wait to talk about in detail some more stories because I always have a lot of details I want to go to. I can law explain. I might read a book. (laughs) They just unsubscribed. (laughs) They this is also going to be the exclusive place that Dirty Chat is going to go to. So if that is breaking some of your hearts, just go ahead and subscribe now in order to hear the full content. It's going to be Patreon. Where do they go again? Patreon.com slash bloody happy hour. Don't forget to stay aware, stay alive, and always be DTF. Welcome to Bloody Happy Hour. Late at night when all the world is sleeping. I stay up and think of you. Welcome to Bloody Happy Hour. Hey, y'all. Hey, y'all. This Teardrop. is April. Teardrop. This is Caroline. And we are here for your Bloody Happy Hour. Yes, <laughs> we got some whiskey. We do. But we're going to get pumped up because we are not depressed. We are so happy. Because Caroline had a birthday. I know. Happy birthday. I'm Ernie. What did you do? <clears throat> oh, my gosh. I'm oh, tell us about your concert. Before we I, get to one legend, talk about yes, your legend. Let's, now, we're going to talk for about 10 minutes, so if you need to just get to the story, fast forward. But otherwise... Or four and a half. It's going to be great. <laughs> uh, I went and saw Tina. It's not really Tina because obviously she's died and she's gone. And I've been to her three of her concerts, so it's fine. But I saw the musical and... We were on the second row, basically the first row, because the first row was like four seats. And then, you know, the rest, we were basically, we were basically, I I pretty much was on stage. I was probably like handicap row the first. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So I was basically on stage. I probably danced with her. I don't know. Did it seem real formal? Were you allowed to like stand up and. Oh, we stood up. But yeah, it, it like if we started to dance, you were like the old people were around you like, uh huh, ma'am. And there weren't, you, you couldn't take out your phone. Oh, I had my phone out the whole time. Oh, okay. But we could bring drinks in. Could? Yeah. Oh. You, like, yeah, yeah. They serve drinks and, yeah. Nice. It was, it was really she fun. She did really good. It was so fun. I had such a good time. Did I, she look like Tina? No. No? mm No. She just sang like her? Did she dance like her? No. Oh. I what? mean, she kind of did. Did she have arms and legs like her? I mean, listen, nobody, she's nothing. <laughs> I'm probably more like Tina than her, okay? But like the the Selena yeah. looks like Selena. Yes. She's got to ask yes. like Selena. She could yes. dance like Selena. Yes. Okay. But as long as the music was. It was, it was so, 
I, you know what? Either way, if it was terrible, I'm going to think it's great. So <laughs> I'm biased in multiple ways, okay. but I loved it. I, my mom is a tough critic on a lot of things and uh -huh. she liked it. Okay. So let's, so that should say a lot. That does say a lot. There we go. It was good. I loved it. Birthday was great. I'm doing, uh, it's, it's great. It was great. Yay. Uh -huh. Cuantos años tienes? And you the past cup. I don't know what. Okay. Well, I should know since Miss Lena. Yo, lo, yo, yo quiero. No, that's I want. Uh, tengo. Yo tengo trece nueve. Ooh. How old am I? What 39. Did I say? Yes. 39. So basically I'm already starting. I'm going to start saving. 39. Oh, 39. Mm -hmm. I am starting to save up now for next year because next 40. year is, I don't know if we can top 30, but okay. I'm going to have to try. Okay. So if you are my friend at that point, you'll be invited to go somewhere fun. I mean, I'm not paying for you, but Caymans. <laughs> actually, maybe I will have a sugar daddy by then. And then he can pay for <laughs> you. All right. Operation but, find Carolina sugar daddy by 40. Yeah. So you got a few, you got 12 months. There we go. Well, no, we'll probably need to do it in like six, but yeah. Um, yeah, so good stuff. Okay. We're going to, we're drinking some Knob Creek whiskey for Carolyn's birthday. So we're going to take a couple shots and, you know, every time a train goes by, because we're downtown Waco, we're going to take another shot. And I don't know, every time you butcher a name on this podcast. Oh, <laughs> yes we need to do it we need to play We're i do have the i do have the some phonetics but i already yeah it's yeah mm -hmm. so if you can't tell already what's your story about oh selena uh, selena y los, y los dinos yes <laughs> see you do you knew you do you know it's actually selena quintalania Quintanilla. Quintanilla. See, take a shot. Mm, <laughs> Selena Quintanilla. It rhymes. Every, I love it. I need all of our Mexican you know, listeners you know why, to be. Yeah, but you know why I love. Okay, because it's like Tejano music, uh -huh. but like it always reminds me of polka. But that's what Tejano music is. It's a mix of polka and kind. What is it? Oh, I have it in the story. Okay, but it, it is. They're like it's a mix of this, this, and this. And I was like, oh, because, you know, I'm Czech and we do polka. Yeah. So I'm basically. Do you ever listen to folk music? Like your folk dance Czech uh, music? A combo. Okay. Who you always played at West Fest? I will listen to like Tejano. I mean, the chicken like, dance. Or any of that. Like any music that I don't know the words. Yeah, we go. Because it has <laughs> great <And> beat. <clears throat> And I don't know the words, and I can concentrate while I'm working. Oh, I'll listen to it while I work. Genius. Yeah. Genius. So let's start by <clears throat> let's start by talking about what you can do for yourself before we get into this. Listen, if listen, you're... if you if you have heard what's happening with Yolanda Saldivar, you might need better help. Yeah. Or if this is going to dredge up some sad Selena memories. Yeah, you, you might, might need, need some better, some better help. help. So, by the way, it's uh, it is entirely online. It's convenient. It's flexible. It's designed to suit your schedule. You just have to fill out a brief questionnaire. You get matched with your licensed therapist. You can switch your therapist if you're like mm, not feeling the therapist. I want to go to somebody else. And there's no additional charge. All you have to do is go to BetterHelp.com/slash bloody that's betterhelp h-e-l-p dot com slash bloody and you'll get 10% off of your first month I can see how that's extra convenient from like for like work from home people where you just get off your computer from work and then just click on your damn therapist session yeah you never have to leave no or work close to home you just go right home don't want to leave yeah yeah I yeah. mean it's I'd probably do more sessions if I did it online yeah. But my lady's office is so nice. I love going in there. Yeah. She's see, like some people type like, a. yeah, some people might need a little bit more FaceTime, but this is FaceTime. So, all right. Well, I think you can choose to do face or not like you can do a FaceTime phone. Camera on or Camera not. on, camera off. Oh. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. So there you go. Um, and 
So in case you're new and you just started the podcast at this, uh, if you fast forwarded and you're starting here today, we're talking about the murder of a singer that was a absolute superstar super in the world of Tejano music and was quickly becoming a huge um, star in the United States. <sighs> she Good was story. portrayed in a movie by J-Lo. J-Lo. Uh, about her life and death, and then she's killed by her fan club president, who had become obsessed with her for uh, she was about to be taken down for embezzling some funds. And this is where we go to Selena. Damn Selena, you, Selena, Yolanda, Cantania. This is who we're talking about. She was amazing. I remember she was born in April of 1971 in Lake Jackson, Texas. Mm-hmm. Do you know where that is? Near I don't. Houston, down south. I would assume so. Yeah, look it up. She's the youngest child of Abraham and Marcella Quintanella. Abraham mm-hmm. was also a mus- musician. Hey, Gee, 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 then. Quintanilla. Oh, Quintanilla. Yeah. I can say it. Quintanilla. See, see, I'm good with the, I'm good with that. I just need to hear it a couple times. Uh I think I'm phonetic. I'm just like Selena. She did. Did you know that she She did did not speak Spanish? (laughs) Quintanilla. Is that what it is? Quintanilla. Quintanilla. A Quintanilla. Oh, it's kind of like Italian, (laughs) but not. So, um, yep. Yep, yep, yep. Abraham, daddy. Daddy was, it's this, it kind of reminds me, it's like Jackson 5 vibes. Okay. Do you think? I don't know. Like daddy was like, dad, like yeah. got the kids together real young. It was like real commanding and demanding and like mean and just like. But well. didn't whoop their ass like Jackson 5. Facts. <laughs> you did Let's not, clarify that. Yeah, that's true. I, I, yeah, it, vibes. <laughs> just, just, just some vibes. Just, just a little vibes. bit. Um, and so. Daddy Abraham was a musician and noticed that Selena was so talented by the age of six. Okay. And he was like her timing, her pitch, everything was perfect. He just knew, I guess he had an ear for it. So 1981, Abraham opened up a Tex-Mex restaurant called Papagayos. Mm. I I would have definitely going to have to go get Mexican food tonight because <laughs> it's so good. Uh, so on a regular basis, the... Family of Abe, which is Abraham, which is uh, well, Selena's brother also is is Abe. Yeah, what, the daddy's Abraham. Okay, and then a- so Abe's brother and Suzette is the sister. Um, and they would all three perform. Okay, Suzette, she's shady bitch. We do not like Suzette. No, I'm trying to think if I liked her on the movie. Well, I don't know about the movie, but based on what I've researched, I did not like her. Was she jealous? I will tell you, she was a snitch. Oh, okay. So Selena was, uh, would obviously, she would sing after, but after a year in all this, I think the amount of, um, okay, they were performing at Papagayo's at the restaurant, but then there was a downturn in the economy and they ended up having to like file bankruptcy and close their restaurant. So then they did not have a place to perform. Okay. Um, and so, yeah, there was like a recession. They had to close the restaurant. Um, they were also evicted from their house. Hmm. So they were going through a rough time. So they packed up. They didn't go too far. And they that's when they settled in Corpus Christi. Hello. I used to live there. Mm-hmm. So Abraham, Daddy Abraham became the manager of this new band he formed consisting of his kids and he named them what did he name them y los dinos selino y, selena y los dinos dinos niños or dinos niños dinos <laughs> selino selinos damn it <laughs> so many shots right now y los dinos yeah y los dinos Selena, is it Selena y los dinos? E is like and. Yeah. And then. But it's a Y. Selena e, yeah. y los dino, dinos. Din, yeah. Yeah. Dinos. So this became the new family business. They played basically everywhere, anywhere that they would they were paid. Street corners, weddings, quinceañeras, fairs, etc. Everywhere. They were just playing anywhere they could do. 
Selena was obviously already an amazing singer and with more and more practice, she became more polished and the popularity of this band grew. And so they also had more scheduled performances and she started to miss a little bit of school because at this point, um, I think she was in eighth grade. Damn. And so she started missing school. She didn't show up. She w- Or when she did show up, she was always really tired. So teachers and the administrators were like noticing. They were like calling dad and they're like, um, or mom and dad. And they're like telling them, oh, well, Selena looks pretty tired. And she's like s- well. slacking on her work and stuff. And he- daddy's like, mind your own business. Mind <laughs> your business. We got Selena and Dinos. Dinos. <laughs> I can't say it. Selena and the guys. Oh, is that what it means? Uh-huh. Okay. And the boys. Um, and he was like, uh, he threatened them with being, or they threatened, they were like, oh, we're going to tell the Texas Board of Education. The teachers thought the conditions that Selena was being, being subjected to were inappropriate for a child of her age and all this stuff. So, yes, she was eighth grade. Uh, and then that's when Abe, daddy, daddy decided to uh, pull her out of school. Homeschool. Oh, yeah. So we would have been saying some red flags. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. She did earn earn a high school diploma by 17 at the American School of Correspondence in Chicago. Probably just an online thing. Okay, yeah. Dang, uh, was that online? Maybe? And later enrolled in a business administration classes at the at Pacific Western University. Selena Selena y los Dinos. I cannot. <laughs> I cannot. Uh, they got to the point to where they were needing to travel more and further away, and they were, like, becoming pretty big, right? So Daddy uh, found a raggedy old bus, fixed it up, and named it Big Bertha. Oh, I love it. And they started traveling in Big Bertha for the next few years. They are playing at shows. They sometimes uh, were... A- barely able to afford food and gas to get to their next gig he but had they a were vision. he had a vision and he was working them i think it's kind of like jackson five they had their van and everything yeah so 1984 selena recorded her first album she wanted to make an english album but that was vetoed by daddy oh daddy he said, said no 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 ma'am no i say no so she sang in Spanish, but she never spoke it. Mm-hmm. She sang beautifully in Spanish. I tell you now. She recorded a Tejano-style album, which is Spanish language music with influences of polka, jazz, and country. That's what Texas. I was... Texas! Polka, jazz, and country. Okay. Influence. So that's what I was talking... Yes, earlier. So this type of music is very popular with the Mexicans living in the United States. It's was also pretty difficult for Selena because um, it was not necessarily the kind of music that she personally liked. Um, And second, she did not speak Spanish. Her parents were fluent, but they, I guess, were rude and they wanted to talk shit about her behind her back and they didn't teach her (laughs) Spanish. I don't know. No, back then, oh. this is why my mom doesn't don't really okay, know it. My, I have a friend who I was talking about, and she's like, my parents are fully they're span they're like she's like I'm half Mexican. And they never back taught me then, anything. and especially like if your parents like came migrated over, you wanted to hurry up and get your kids Americanized because you were judged, mm-hmm. you know. So you wanted to. Wanted your kids to be as Americanized as quickly as possible. So when they started school, school was already hard because there was Spanish at home, English at school, and you didn't want to slow them down by dual languages, really. And you wanted them to be more Americanized. Now now, it's, you- now we have a generation full of... Like me and my mom and your friend and like Selena, like people who should know Spanish but don't because the parents back then didn't push it because they were like, why? Right? I guess I thought. I guess So now they're, we're wanting parent. Now we want the like kids to It's an to advantage. Be dual. Yes. To be, yeah. I'm most, pissed. I'm pissed. I'm, I'm mad all the time. Yeah. So, but I was like, like, uh, what? <sighs> I thought always how 
what you were raised around. Like if your parents are at home speaking Spanish to each other, like that's what you, you learn it by hearing it and by being around it. So did they not just, did they just not speak Spanish in front of, around you or to you? They just spoke English to you? Or- yeah, because parents are usually both. So say, um, okay, so you're at school all day long speaking English, English, English. Mm-hmm. And you and your siblings English? know English, English, English. English, English. And only at home sometimes do you need to speak Spanish. And that gets few and far between because more people in the house speak English, English. than it. Spanish. Yep. So Spanish just gets pushed back and gets pushed back and gets pushed back. Well, I would have been pissed too. Instead of like pushing it, like, yeah. no, you're going to do it. You're going to do it. Yeah. You're going to do it. They yeah. were like, well, you know, let's not. Now, and even like the school systems, they're pushing it even more. It's pretty amazing that a Spanish, that that like a singer so popular as Selena with the Spanish speaking um, audience or following couldn't speak conversational Spanish. Uh And I did not know that. And I've watched the movie, but it was like so long ago. Yeah, it didn't register. But yeah, I, I was surprised that. She didn't. And now a word from our sponsors. Hey, I'm Blair. And I'm Brittany. And we're the host of By By the the Cover Cover Podcast. Podcast. (laughs) We cover everything from mysteries, thrillers, romance, chiclet, and even some smut. Don't forget the smut. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) We're so excited to get this thing going and share this with you guys. We've been talking about this for months and it's finally, finally happening. Yes. Special shout out to Rogue Media for helping us with this. For sure. (laughs) For sure. You can find us on Instagram at by the cover underscore podcast. You can also find us on Facebook and TikTok. So don't forget to give us a follow on those two also. And we are so excited to dive into some of our favorite books and share those with you. We can't wait. Hope you love it. Hi, and welcome to Bustles and Bangers with your hostess, Rachel and Christopher. I love it when you say my name. And you didn't say hi. I didn't. You you just kept going. I'm going to introduce the book. I'm <laughs> not reading it. It's because I don't like reading. Girls like cowboy butts, you know, and those jeans don't hide anything. Mm. Find us on Instagram at Bustles and Bangers or on RogueMediaNetwork.com. So uh, one of her at, well, at first, during recording sessions for the first album, she had to learn Spanish phonetically with the help of her dad, mm-hmm. which that's basically how I learn everything. Like, like sound it out and yeah. you say, yeah. Yeah. So that was pretty wild. So 1987 at the Tejano Music Awards, Selena won Female Vocalist of the Year. And for the next nine consecutive years, she won that same award, but she still had trouble getting booked at venues to play because the promoters said Selena was a woman in a genre that was historically dominated by men. Men. And you know the culture. And no doubt the promoters that wouldn't hire the band were men. Like the all the people who were hiring were men. So they yeah, were, yeah. they were men hiring men. And it's machismo back then. It's yeah, like machismo. women are supposed to be in the in the house, taking care of the kids, cooking, cooking. cleaning. You yes. don't do stuff like that. No, you don't. But then 1988 came around. Band, the band released five more albums. At the 1989 Tejano Music Awards, Selena performed. The audience included Jose Bayer, Bayar, Bayar. Uh, of EMI Latin Records. Okay. Um, and Sony Music Latin. So we have these record r- record producers who are at one of her concerts that she's performing. They both want to sign her to major, major deals. Sounds pretty legit. So being the manager of the band uh, and the one that made the, the decisions, which is Daddy... He chose EMI. Despite the fact that Sony offered twice as much money to sign, EMI said they would consider letting them put out a crossover English album 
which is what Selena wanted. So I was like, okay, so he's he's looking uh-huh. out for her. Okay, I think. Um, so she and her brother Abe, who also helped produce the band's music, wrote and recorded several English songs for EMI executives to listen to. Um, the crossover album was then denied. Yeah. Mm. And Selena was told that she needed a bigger fan base to sell that kind of an album. Why people ain't buying your music yet, Selena? So she made another <laughs> Spanish album featuring a cover of the song Sukiyaki, which is a Japanese. Take a drink. Take a drink. <laughs> I even have the phonetics. Sukiyaki. Now I want Chinese food. I do too. <laughs> John want chicken and broccoli <laughs> with fried rice and sauce on the side. I'm going to go get it. I want some sushi. I had sushi on Tuesday. The real sushi. Mm. Which is a Japanese song that also had been done in English. Okay, so apparently this song was a big song, whatever. So with the help of that song, this uh, Tsukiyaki, it helped uh, Selena peak to number seven on the Billboard charts. I love it. Who used to do the billboards every? You just said his name earlier. Casey Kasem. Casey Kasem. Casey. Oh, I used Kasem. to love the Saturdays. I know, and he was always on Say by the Bell. You know. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, Casey Kasem. I know. I didn't realize he was real. I thought it was just Say by the Bell person, and then I thought figured out he was real. So she's number seven on the U.S. Billboard Regional Mexican chart, Mexican albums chart. That same year, Coca-Cola wanted Selena as a spokesperson in Texas. Get it, Coke? You be knowing. So uh, Brother Abe teamed up with a musician named Chris Perez. Oh, Chris. To create, to create the commercial jingle. Chris joined Selena y los Delos. Oh, Say it. shit. Take a God drink. Damn it. Damn, you you have okay. Say say, it. say Selena and Dim. <laughs> okay, Chris joined Selena and Dim. <laughs> no, Selena y los Dinos. Dinos. I, I know, but I say I say Selino y los Dino. So I say it. How all, you make it, Selena, a boy? I because that's how my I have a speech impediment. <laughs> Do we need to go back to the speech impediment? <laughs> I'm telling you what. <laughs> Selena y los Dinos. They there you need go. A, it's their fault. Okay. A few. <laughs> oh, because uh, you're going to feminine to masculine no, is what you're saying. It's, I'm not even saying that. I'm saying it's just like, oh, 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 oh. But now I'm you know, Selena. Ah, uh, el otino. Like it's not. Yeah. It's not conducive to my mouth. Hmm, that's what she said. But a few months prior uh, <laughs> as a guitarist. So he was helped out as the guitarist. And then he was working on this jingle. And he was but doing, he, he was, also had a girlfriend. She's about to be doing some jingling. Mm, be jingling, <laughs> jingling all the way back to San Antonio. So he had a girlfriend back home in San Antonio, but quickly fell for Selena. Oh, yes. Um, and so he tried to keep, um, wait, what? He tried to keep his distance for a while. He was like, oh, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a just, uh-huh. I'm not going to, fo- I'm not going to follow your location. I'm not going to text you all the time. I'm not going to be in your DMs. I'm not going to be in your DMs. I'm going to not think about you at all, but he could not resist. It was magnetic force. And he, it was like, this is not helping. And he was behind her all the time. And she, mm, she had that, that ass. Yep. Yeah, it was ass, ass. Ass, 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 So he tried to keep his distance, but he found it was not helping. Um, at a Pizza Hut one night, Selena and Chris yeah, sat she and she loved pizza. Talked. I remember. Damn it! Now we're eating pizza. Like, what are we eating? Uh, are we eating Mexican food? Are we Chinese food? Are we eating pizza? Like, what I'm are at we pizza eating? now. It's pizza. I've, I'm For stuck. A I'm stuck on chicken and broccoli. So, just saying. Um, but it wasn't helping. In the pizza was just ugh, they couldn't get their fill, and so they told each other how they felt, and they were like. We're going to do it. We're going to make a... We're going to go. We're going to have a relationship. Mm, mm, mm. But it's got to be secret. Oh, yeah. Because daddy... Because daddy was not having it. No. Daddy is like, no, ma'am. So in 1990, Selena's next album was released. It was another big success. Um, still Spanish songs on this one. It was around this time that a fan of Selena's approached Daddy Abraham... Asking to start a fan club. Oh, a 
What's her name? Her name is Holanda. <laughs> okay, Holanda. Her name is Yolanda Saldivar, but I'm going to refer to her as Holanda. I bet there has not been a Hispanic person named their kid Yolanda since They better this. not. <laughs> and and speaking of Holanda, uh, is, at, at the time she's a regis- registered nurse from San Antonio. Daddy Abraham is thinking it would it would generate more exposure for the band. And we're like, okay, well, you're this big fan. Like, like yeah, let's start this fan club. And Yolanda, Holanda quickly like wiggled her little Oh, was she a number short one? Short little fan? fat ass up in here in the family and become close with Selena. Oh. Back, <laughs> Selena trusted her and named her acting president of the fan club. So in 1992, oh. Suzette, Selena's sister. Snake, as I like to call her, Snake Suzette, saw her and Chris, Uh who she was having pizza with, so she saw them flirting. Yeah. And she immediately snitched to daddy. Rummy, yeah, because, listen, Selena has been the favorite, and she needs a way, the golden child, she needs a way to maybe get Selena on the shit list for a little bit. You, you know what this is like. Oh, I don't have a clue. What are you talking about? <laughs> so, of course, Daddy was upset. Like, they knew, or like, Snitch, whatever her name is, the Snitch, predicted. She knew. She knew it was going to piss him off. So, Daddy kicked Chris off the bus, oh. told him whatever they had was over, and was like, this rela- like the relationship was approved by mama. Mama said it was okay. Daddy was like, no, you're kicked off the van. You're kicked off the bus. Bye. Get out of here. Suzette, you're number one. No. Abraham called Chris a cancer to the family and fired him. Oh, and that's over. But guess what? They continue their relationship in secret because that's what you do. Yes. Makes you want each other more. Knowing that Abraham, daddy, did not approve of the relationship and they decided we going to elope. Oh, yeah. But within hours of the elopation, <laughs> on <laughs> April 2nd, <laughs> listen, and I'm no, April's it, a bit, because she was born in April. I know. Did she get married in April? You. And it is elopation, okay? <laughs> <laughs> if you don't know what that means, Google it and tell me what it means, because I don't either. Um, and it was April 2nd, 1992. The media found out and announced it, and Daddy Abraham was livid. Oh, no. He was not happy, and he alienated himself for a while. He was like, I can't deal with this. I'm going to go. And I guess he just hid like in a cave or something. Chris and Selena ended up moving into an apartment in Corpus Christi, Together and her father eventually came around. So Abraham was pissed. He was like not having it. And then finally he was like, I got to stop digging my heels in because my daughter's the one making the money and bringing the shit in. So yeah. you got to figure it out. Fuck around and find out. F-A-F-O, Abraham. Come on. He then apologized and welcomed Chris back into the band. <laughs> He's probably like, take some of his birth control because I don't need you getting pregnant because I don't need you to mess up that nice ass. No, they got to have like 10 kids. Not while you're a singer. No, no. I don't need you to look like your sister Suzette. Oh, Suzette must be, she must look like a Yolanda, Holanda up in here. She did. She did. I don't even care. Oh, battery saver's on. Better better get to stepping. So Selena's next album was out. It was critically acclaimed as her breakthrough album. She gained more success, notoriety, all the things, more awards. And then in 1994, she started a clothing line and opened boutiques to sell all the stuff she designed. Holanda was the fan club president. So she was the one put in charge of the boutiques and they were so impressed. But basically they put her in charge of that because she was so impressive on how she ran this fan club. Here's the red flag, um, Abraham. You've got your family is 
and all, he everything. hates everybody and any other outsider he can't stand. Yes. So, but then all of a sudden you're just going to take this stranger. Well, maybe she's like that BJ, was a nurse. BJ. She's BJ in him. She's definitely giving. Him she was a nurse. She's not even like in 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 media or random ass marketing. Random ass Holanda. 1995. Selena became an absolute star. She has huge success. Big enough so to where she started to begin on her English crossover album. But with Holanda at the helm, the boutiques started to slip. And they were like, well, this doesn't make sense because, like, you're at your most popular state. Your boutiques, you should be, like, banking. You should be, like, selling shit, making stuff. You're as popular as ever. And so they're like, what is happening? And so they're like, let's look into this. Let's look into Holanda. Yeah. And so they saw that Holanda had fired a bunch of the staff. And she was just like, if she didn't like somebody for no reason at all, she was like, mm, you're fired. You're fired. You're oh, fired. Oh, taking Bam. power to the head. Yes. And then they were let go. So the staff that still remained, they were like, we cannot stand her. We do not like her. They started to talk to tell Selena about it. But Selena was so trusting and she had such a good heart. And she was just like, Oh, she's just, she's doing her best, you know? And I mean, I relate to Selena because you know, I always like to give people the benefit of the doubt, even mm -hmm. though I talk shit, but I really <laughs> am. I, I really don't stand my ground. Um, but she was like, no, she has my best interests. Like it's fine. And she dismissed all the complaints. Well, then they got fed up with it. Employees did. And they're like, no, we're going to daddy. So they went to daddy and they're like, listen, Yolanda's acting like this, this and this. And we know that you typically think that nobody can be trusted outside of the family. So look into this Holanda and what yeah. she's doing. And so he believed them. He believed the other employees. And Good. so... um. But what they also told him was very disturbing was that Holanda had become very obsessed, creepy, creepily obsessed with Selena, like beyond. So about that time, he started to hear about phone call phone calls where fan club members had to pay a fee, but nobody ever was returning like there was nothing in there was nothing in return like they were paying for stuff they were not getting anything in return oh. so they were paying a fee for this paying a fee for this maybe if it's like they're signing up for some special thing and they didn't get what they paid for yeah i'm, yeah. I'm supposed to get a t-shirt each month but i never yes. get my t-shirt yes so abraham discovered that holanda had embezzled more than thirty thousand mm. dollars from the fan club and the boutique. So March 9th, 1995, Abraham got Suzette, the snitch, and they went and they had a meeting with Holanda. Um, and they confronted her about the missing money and told her that if she did not provide evidence about where this money went, that she was going to, they were going to get the police involved. And <sighs> she would also be fired. So... He told her that uh, her obsession was not allowed. She was no longer allowed contact with Selena. Okay. And oh. that did not go out. Well. No. And also, Selena didn't want that because she didn't. I, I she didn't think it that was like her grandma. Yeah, she still kind of thought that Yolanda Holanda was a key to the future success of her boutiques. No, she took $30,000 from you. I know. I know. Abraham, I, I think she needed to see the receipts. So Selena wanted the receipts. No. Yeah. She was like, I need to know. I need, okay. She Because, you know, she can't trust her dad. She can't trust you, Holanda. You know, whenever. You I can trust I, your daddy. You can trust your daddy. Well, maybe she, I don't know. I, I just think maybe she, at that point she didn't. Or, well, at least she didn't trust the snitch, she didn't snitch bitch <laughs> sister. That's for sure. Poor Suzette. Poor Suzette. Give me a break. So Abraham, daddy was like. I think this is displaced anger. <laughs> Abraham still insisted on seeing evidence of the money of the bank statements. Yolanda delayed and delayed and delayed before claiming that she was beaten up 
and raped while in Mexico on March 31st, 1995. What year was this? I don't even know. I tried to tell you. No, no, no. <laughs> the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was, it was 1995. So, she, so on March 9th. Okay. And so then this was on March 31st. She got raped and she got beaten up in Mexico. Oh, so she couldn't. They also took the receipts when they raped her. Yeah, yeah. Listen, who's going to bend that over? <laughs> a dirt, a no, a, a blind not even donkey. Doing it in I don't know. A blind, they're not even naked doing it mole in rat. Prison. I don't know. So, Tammy better. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I, we're going to get there. We're getting there. <laughs> so, Selena was like, you know what? I'm going to take this and I'm going to do it. I'm going to go meet Holanda and I'm going to meet her in her, her hotel room in the Days Inn. Or motel, whatever. That's a motel. In corp- so motel room, Corpus Christi. So Selena demanded, she was like, Yolanda, I need to see this financial paperwork. I, mm-hmm. Yep. And she she was like, okay, I need to see this paperwork. Give it to me. I need to see it. I need you to just, like, be straight up with me and come, up, come yeah. with the receipts. Come with the receipts. And, um... So she, Yolanda grabs into her bag, but she didn't pull out paperwork. No. Bitch pulled out a pistol. And what? From her purse. She pointed it at Selena. Selena tried to run, but Holanda fired a shot that hit Selena in the lower right shoulder, severing an artery, gushing blood. Selena continued to escape, and the trail of blood coming from Selena was nearly 400 feet long before she made it into the motel lobby where she named the person who shot her and the room number and then collapsed on the floor. Yolanda was still chasing her, was yelling obscenities at her. Yolanda then got into her truck and attempted to leave, but was spotted by responding officers and then had a nine and a half hour standoff oh. inside her truck where she tried to threaten to commit Yes. Wait, is this what are we we're in 95? Okay. Yes. Yeah, I remember. Y'all, does this bring Fresh back memory. every memory of your life? And I hate that I'm picturing the actress who played Yolanda Saldivar in the movie instead of actually Yolanda oh, Saldivar. See, I, I know, and I can't remember. Who, but she killed the role. The whole movie, it, everybody no killed in, the role. No pun intended. <laughs> nope. <laughs> No pun Take intended. Take a drink for the pun. <laughs> that was not intended, but happened. They all killed it. Oh, so, man. I, you know what? I didn't realize, because I, I think, what, okay, if this came out in 95, or wait, when did the movie come out? Google it. I, it, ha- it all happened. Okay, if it all happened in 95, then it had to come out. But that's when she really blew up. Because that was, well, I was she in high blew school. Up. We were I listening. think she might have blown up after death. Yeah. Yes, that's what I'm, yeah, yeah. Post mortem. Posthumous. Post trauma. Posthumous. It's posthumous. Oh, okay. Don't make me yell about it. I'll tell you. Posthumous. <sighs> I did not realize that she was able to. The movie to- came out in 97. Okay, so I was 12. And I know I watched it, but it's still, you don't, you don't comprehend, like, watching it now and watching it then, it's way obviously different. Do you never repeat movies? Well, I didn't think about going back and watching it. Fuck (laughs) Saltburn. That was a weird shit. I'm going to go watch it tonight, okay? Where can I watch it? Look that up. Okay. Nine and a half hours. So this bitch then sat in her truck for nine and a half hours with a gun. You know she got hungry. She had to have chips in that car because she was <laughs> definitely not on Ozempic. Um, she was not on the O. She eventually surrendered. And then at the hospital, there were attempts to save Selena's life, but they were unsuccessful and her fans were devastated, as was I and were, as were we. So her death was compared to the likes of John Lennon, Elvis Presley, JFK, uh. because of the amount of pouring in of the fans and the it the the funeral drew like 60,000 people like it was just huge the amount of people that wanted to pay their respects like i i mean yeah i 
You can't go to the flea market right now today and not see somebody with a Selena shirt on. I, or see I think them I'm gonna selling have to, them. I'm gonna or have to, to the mall a on a Sunday. <laughs> I didn't even know we still had them all, but if we... I'm telling you. I think I need a Selena shirt, so... Um, yeah, I'm going to have to get one. I should have wore one for this episode. I should have prepared. You should have made us prepare. I know, but you know what? We always have next oh, week. Like a so he, um, uh, oh, oh, a few days after the funeral, this is just random fact, Howard Stern and the stuff that he did, I guess this was big news, on his radio show, he mocked the mourners and the fans. Uh, he mocked everybody. Okay, but he oh, said that it? Spanish people have the worst taste in music. He played Selena's songs with gunshots in the background and then later apologized, but not before a disorderly arrest warrant was issued. For him? Yes. But what a dick. What you're really Listen, gonna Listen, Howard Stern. I mean, he, he should have been day. canceled a trillion times. Well, back, back but then, we were thick there was no canceling. Yeah, we yeah. had we had skin you back could then. Actually, you could actually hear something and get over it, and you weren't punished for any word you said. Or Yeah, uh, and, and there's nothing funny and this about is that. Like, that's, yeah. that's shitty to do, but... Some of the stuff you could find, like the humor in it, like, yeah, that like he would say, he would bring like... Maybe uh, this was the beginning of cancel culture. No, that was rightly so. He needed to shut that down. Yeah, that was but, so shitty. <laughs> that was but shitty. on the other hand, the uh, governor of Texas at the time, which was George Bush, George W. Bush, declared that he Selena. Was the governor? Yeah, I remember because I fit. Well, I don't remember, but I, That's I why did I go lived here. I. Well, yeah, because I saw whenever I won the World Se- softball World Series, we get to go visit him in the governor's whatever mansion. In Crawford. No, like at the actual, wherever they have, in Austin, I guess. Oh, okay. But anyways, um, he declared that Selena's birthday, April 12th, was Selena Day in (gasps) Texas, saying that Selena represented the essence of South Texas culture. I think it should have been all of Texas culture. And then in 19, in October 1995, so not too long after, I mean, that didn't take long for them because she's pleaded guilty, I guess. Uh, a Houston jury convicted Holanda Saldivar of first degree murder and sentenced her to life in prison, eligible for parole in 2025. Oh my God. Bitch ain't going to get out though. Because, you know, you always get, typically, on your first parole, based on a, a, a lawyer friend I talked to. That's why all the Mexicans are coming to Texas in case she yeah. gets. That is it. That's why they're busting the piñata. <laughs> P-O-S-T-H-U-M-O-U-S. What does it mean, though? H-U-M-O-U-S. How do you say that? Humus. H- humus. It's it's your after death record. Like it's it's like after death, you are making more money than you did oh, during yeah. life, right? Okay. So why don't her, they say post mortem? Like when I, it's just huh? Okay. New word. So, well, it, I, I mean, it's actually not to a new us, word. To us. No, I, I, I've actually. To me. To you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's clarify that. <laughs> Her album, Dreaming of You, which came out in 1995, debuted atop the Billboard 200, making Selena the first Latin artist uh, to accomplish this. And then in 1997, Warner Brothers released Selena, hey girl. the film about. J-Lo. Her life and career, which obviously star J Lo as Selena, and um, basically she kind of rocked it after yeah. death. And gosh, Robert Roberta Laundry faced possible arrest. <gasps> oh gosh, we have more breaking news. Okay, <laughs> anyways, let's play. Let me play you. Okay, she's up for parole, twenty twenty five. But what? The reason that this case has been brought to my attention right now is because it just came out that there is going to be a docu-series that is coming out on February 17th, which I don't know what day even anything happens. That is Saturday. Okay, so you'll hear this. So it'll come out. It'll be out by the time you hear this. Mm -hmm. Um, And so this bitch is over here in prison coming out with her side of the story because there's other things that we don't know. And I'm just going to play you a little bit, a little bit of something, something. So here you go. 
on Peacock. I just can't imagine. She's Unbelievably like... Unbelievably tragic news today. Selena is dead. <gasps> Police say she was gunned down in a Texas motel by a fan, Yolanda Salvivar. An artist killed by their band club president? This is like, come on, this doesn't happen. Family members say Saldivar was embezzling money from the fan club and that Selena was shot while trying to fire the woman. Yolanda Saldivar killed Selena intentionally and knowingly. What the public's been told isn't exactly what happened in reality. All these years, Yolanda saying the same thing. I didn't mean to do it. it. Was an accident. Is there more to the story than I know? Hell yes. As long as the person at the center of all this, I mean, she's still around. You got anything to say? After so many years, I think it's time to set the story straight. My family gathered the evidence shows different versions of what was going on. This is not a simple case of murder. During the trial, I started hearing Selena's got a secret. Yolanda, it's you, Selena. Can you give me a call? I was scared. I was frightened. She's just a person you can't believe. I knew her secrets. And I think the people deserve to, to know the truth. Oh, no. Selena and Yolanda. I can't. The secrets between I them. I cannot the even, What do we think it's even going to be? Is she going to say, it's like, a, Selena had a drug problem and, like, no, that's where the money went? Is she going to say, blame something on dad? No. I, 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 I watched a freaking other interview from, like, back in the day, like, crinkledy, like, looking interview. And she was blaming it on some guy. Like, she was just like, oh, let me find it. Push pause and let me find it because it was. And not only to them, but to me. But they want to know why you killed her. I won't discuss that. Bitch. Why not? Because the truth is not out. So tell it. Not in the court law. You've had your day in court. Why didn't you tell it then? I was not given an opportunity to defend myself. I was represented, which is different. Yolanda, at that time, your life depended on it. If there is this information that if it doesn't exonerate you, at least gives context as to why Selena Quintanilla is dead, why would you not have demanded that that be presented in court to spare your life? If I knew then what I know now, you can rest assured that my trial wouldn't have gone the way it is, or that it was. I can assure you that. During the course of a two-hour interview, okay. Yolanda was continually evasive, bolstering the public image that she's clever, that cunning, interview. and manipulative. While her conviction is on appeal, Yolanda's reluctance to answer certain questions is understandable. But then, as the interview continues, she jumps at an opportunity to supposedly tell all. This is a letter that your family has said you received here in prison. Is it? Mm -hmm. Behind the music was given two letters by the Saldivar family prior to this interview. They are allegedly from a man named Lorenzo Salinas, who Yolanda says she and Selena met while doing business in Mexico in early 95. The Texas Department of Corrections confirms the letters were mailed from outside the prison. But during an exhaustive seven-month investigation, behind the music, was unable to find Lorenzo Salinas or confirm his existence. He tells me exactly what I've been saying all along. Which is what? That he feels his conscience is killing him because he knows the truth. And he knows that he feels that, or he thinks that I have things that will eventually say it all. What? And Do you? Huh? Yes. Yolanda claims that two weeks prior to the murder, she discovered videotapes damaging to Selena's career, and that she had a diary of Selena's that corroborated information on the tapes. In his purported letter, Lorenzo Salinas claims he was hired to beat up Yolanda to retrieve the tapes and diary as part of a plot to extort Selena. Yolanda oh, claims she yeah. was attacked, but managed to get away. <laughs> You know where those tapes are now? Exactly. You know where that diary is now? I know where they're at. Yolanda contends they That's remain good. where she stashed them in a safe deposit box in Monterey, Mexico. Why is that information significant to the death of Selena Quintanilla? Because that is many of the things that we discussed that day. What? It was not about the embezzlement. Mm -mm. It was not about no obsessed fan or being fired. Because that's about the many things that we obsessed <laughs> to talk that day. What, bitch? What are you even saying? Are you even speaking? Oh, my goodness. I don't know what she just said, but it made zero. There was nothing. No. Word salad. 
So what is she trying to say? And that? Yeah. Like, who is this guy that she's talking about? And what is this guy? Like, he, what? Did, she made him up. <laughs> and 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 listen, how is if it there was fault, evidence, if you shot her in the back. Listen, if there was evidence in a safety deposit box in a bank in Mexico, that bank would have been burnt down that day because somebody would have got to that. Like behind Selena, please. Yes. Behind Selena. Lord. They're going to knock, Mexicans are going to knock down some doors behind it's Selena be, y los dinos. It's going to be bad. <laughs> but listen. I can't wait now. I, I know. Gotta see. I know. It's this is a perfect up. time. Oh. Yeah, perfect time to do it because now we can get the refresher of the story and then hear what Yolanda's ass, Holanda's got to say. So this is what's funny is that I'm assuming they're all in this little prison together. Yolanda, Caitlin, <laughs> Tammy. Tammy's about to join them. Darlene, Rudy Air, or whoever. Oh, yeah. Is that the right name? I always get her and the other one confused. Darlie. Yeah. And uh, and Darlene Gentry from Gentry. Here. That's yeah. the one I get confused with those two. Yeah. But um gosh, I just need to be on somebody's list to I go mean, visit. I think we need to do that. Like we've we've been to trials. We're over. <laughs> I'm over going to trial. <laughs> it's time to go to prison. <laughs> But, okay, so that's wild, and that's the story of Selena King. I love it. It made me sad all I over know, again. I know. I know. I do need to go watch the movie again and yeah. get a refresher. So that was a great gonna, story. Perfect I timing. It. I know. Perfect I always timing. like to do what's relevant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what's happening right now in the news. I know. So there you go. Good stuff. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right, everybody go and go to Spotify or however you listen to your music and go listen to some Selena music. Do it. I know that um, you can still go to her like memorial. She's got a whole memorial in Corpus Christi Aww. in there. But I wonder if that Days In is still there, like where she actually got <gasps> shot. If you're a Corpus Christi listener, tell us or send us a picture yeah. of... The day's in, is it still there? And then send us her memorial. My, I had a good friend that would go every time she went and visited. Love it, love it, love it. Uh, bitty, 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 bum, bum. Bitty, bitty, bum, bum. Oh, do we need to end on bitty, bitty, bum, bum? If we can, is that allowed? Como la flora. Say the ending as it's going out. Hey. That is it. We'll see y'all next time. Don't forget to stay aware. Stay alive. And always be DTF. And don't hire strangers to be a fan club member, especially if they were a nurse. There was your red flag. And if they have real, real, real skinny spread apart eyebrows. <laughs> it's not acceptable. <laughs> Especially if flags. they're drawn on with Sharpie. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>